Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Assassin's Read Book Club. Happy November. I apologize for this episode coming out a few days late uh, between the Assassin's Creed Origins game coming out and the fact that I've been like knee deep in job hunting. Uh, it's been just really, really busy the last couple weeks and this kind of fell by the wayside. So I apologize for that. Uh, if you're curious about new job stuff, hopefully I'll have something to announce by the end of the month. That's what I'm aiming for. You can follow me on Twitter. I'll probably announce it there. Anywho, uh, before we get started with Desert Oath, which was the book for October, uh, just a quick note that November's book is going to be the Assassin's Creed Reflections comic. This is the comic series that explores kind of side stories for Altair, Ezio, Edward, and Connor. Uh, so as always, we did a giveaway, and congratulations to the winners of that giveaway. Uh, and if you didn't win the giveaway, please feel free to pick up a copy of the book using the Amazon affiliate link in the description below. Alright, why don't we get started with Assassin's Creed Desert Oath, prequel to Assassin's Creed Origins. Um, I am reviewing this from the perspective of someone who has finished Assassin's Creed Origins, the main story, um, but there won't be any spoilers for the game, so... Uh, but I might make a reference here, a non-spoilerish reference here or there. Um, so things I liked, um, I really liked the way that they portrayed Bayek's relationship with his father, um, and kind of... Uh, the explanation of the Medjai values and how you kind of really get a sense of um, what the Medjai are uh, there for and what Bayek's destiny kind of is. I'm trying to come up with the right words for this, but I think they did a pretty good job of establishing um, like the set of values that they follow and the ones that Bayek has to embody going into the events of Origins. Um, I thought the villain was really well done, Bion. I, I'm assuming it's Bion or something similar, <laughs> and it might be completely butchering that. But um, I like. I thought he was one of the best villains we've seen in these novels. Um, you know, he's really highly skilled, but there's also kind of this interesting aspect of him that you know he's kind of dead inside, <laughs> which is a little sad. But he's just like this empty, like he almost. He's like, I think I like killing. Yeah, I like killing, but it doesn't really fulfill me, and nothing in this life fulfills me. And oh, uh, but and he's not. <laughs> but he's also not devoid. He's not entirely devoid of honor either. So like, you know, he's willing to give. Um, you know, he he's willing to. <laughs> I want to say he's willing to give props, but that's not the right term for this. Um, he's willing to respect uh, people who. Um, who eventually like best him in combat, etc. Um, and uh, Aya, I like Aya a lot, um, both in the game and in this book. And I thought their relationship was pretty well portrayed. It was interesting to see, kind of like their early relationship, like leading into um, their marriage. Uh, so dislikes, um, you know, overall, I really like this book. It didn't blow me away, but I really, I thought it was a very solid prequel book. Um, so most of the stuff, not a whole lot of really big dislikes. One of the important, probably the biggest dislike, though, is I wanted more ties to the world of Assassin's Creed. Because this is a prequel to the origin story of the Brotherhood, it basically means there's like no, there's just pretty much zero ties to, you know, the, the world that we all know, or at least kind of like any uh, rituals or anything like I want to see maybe a little bit more um, of I know they're going to cover a lot of the rituals and their origins in the game but I was hoping they would lay down down the foundation a little more and the closest thing we get is the feather ritual which is really just weird because like it's seemingly completely random it's like Bayek has some feathers with him and he just like I don't know, in like a like a daze is almost just like, I'm going to mix the feather with your blood, and then I'm going to mix it with the blood of your killer for like no real reason. I'm just going to do it. Like, uh, and then, like, none of that is referenced in the game either. I don't think it's really a spoiler, but like, Bayek has his own thing with feathers in the game, and it has like nothing to do with what he does with the feather in uh, in Desert Oath. And so that was just really weird. Um, and I actually kind of wanted a little more ties into the game itself, I guess. So, for example, I thought this would be a good opportunity to show uh, Bayek, how Bayek met Senu. 
uh, because Senu obviously is not in the book if you've read it. And when you start the game, it's just like, oh yeah, he has an eagle, and it's there's no story behind it. And I thought it might have been a nice little thing, like maybe he rescued Senu from like I don't know from something that was trying to kill kill her. I don't. I'm not a writer, but like. <laughs> I, I guess I wanted more ties into the game and also into the real, into the world of Assassin's Creed, I guess. Um, there are a few ties, like there, are, when you play the game, you'll see some recurring characters from the book. Um, there's a dislike I have that's not really Desert Oath dislike, it's like a game dislike, but there's one character whose portrayal starts off consistent with Origins, but then, and I'm saying this trying not to do any spoilers, but starts off consistent with their portrayal and origins but then kind of doesn't really align with how you know the character I feel like and I was a little sad about that um but I think that's pretty much going to cover it oh I guess the other thing is that there are a few typos like maybe like half a dozen typos I found and that's generally maybe about twice as many as I would expect for a book like this um and I don't know. I, Heresy was the other book that had a significant number of typos in it. So there's something in that pipeline that's just not really uh, needs, uh, in my opinion, needs to be like tightened up a little bit. One of my favorite typos in this book was uh, <laughs> was a moment where they used um, the term uh, where they were going to where they meant to use the term impotent rage, but instead they used important rage, and it kind of just made the f- sentence really funny to me. I don't know. I just I get amused by things like that. Okay. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about Desert Oath. Uh, you know, like I said, I largely enjoyed it. I thought it was a pretty good prequel book um, with a few quibbles. Uh, before we end the video, uh, highlights from last week's uh, not last week, last month's uh, Assassin's Creed video. This was covering Assassin's Creed Uprising Volume One. Uh, I like this comment from Trees All Over, and I'm kind of heavily excerpting it because it was a long comment, (laughs) which is good. But um, the main point I wanted to grab from it, this is talking about kind of like the superhero tone that Uprising has and like the really kind of really action movie kind of Marvel Cinematic Universe feel it has to it. And Trees All Over says like, I guess it reflects the temptation of using, using action movie or perhaps superhero comic visuals to pull people in. I think that's a good point with um, the fact that the medium of this story is comics, so it's kind of tempting to kind of use standard comic imagery for things like this. They say also, alternatively, it's also a matter of the events, of the timeline, Juno's actions, the accumulation of power and pieces of Eden, uh, pushing the modern day away from our timeline, if you will. And so a decision eventually has to be made in terms of how fa- the fantastical elements of the series would cause the world to develop. Uh, who knows if the action... Okay, so I'm going to stop right there and say, yeah, I think that's a really good point. Um, you know, things have kind of diverged ever since 2012, um, I think. Uh, and Brahman also had like a lot of tech, and Trees Oliver mentions that later in the comment as well. Um, yeah, I think it's a good point. I think the modern day is kind of diverging a lot more from our timeline uh, than it has in the past. And so I guess, yeah, it would be nice if... Um, I guess they're kind of just trying to settle on how much it can diverge. But I think it speaks... So, I, I agree a lot with this last sentence uh, that I have excerpted here, who says, Who knows if the action movie tech and tone in this one will have any impact on other parts of the series, though. That's probably the biggest worry I have, is that... Um, I have a hard time seeing the action movie tone of Uprising and like all the tech and like Otto Berg basically being a superhero or villain, depending on your perspective. I have a hard time seeing that kind of just uh, transferring, just showing up like in the games or maybe even in the books or the movies. Like everything else seems to be a lot more grounded than this comic series. And so I'm a little worried about like kind of the tone. yeah, like the shifting tones between the different things. It makes the world feel less cohesive. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, thanks Trees All Over for the comment. Um, and I think that's going to do it for this week's... Why do I keep saying week? <laughs> this month's episode of Assassin's Creed. Thank you all for watching as always. And I'll see you in another month for Assassin's Creed Reflections. Bye.